Welcome back. We've got breaking news from the Turkey-Syria border this morning. Our own Richard Engel, who is on the ground, says that the pause in fighting is mostly holding, but what you're looking at are images where bombing and gunfire can be heard less than 24 hours after the U.S. and Turkey reached what VP Pence called a ceasefire deal. Turkey agreeing to stop its offensive against the Kurds for five days, giving them time to withdraw from the region, but it is unclear this morning if either side is actually going to comply. Still, President Trump seems very happy with the deal. The Kurds were great. Great day for the Kurds. It's really a great day for civilization. I just want to thank and congratulate, though, President Erdogan. He's a friend of mine, and I'm glad we didn't have a problem because, frankly, he's a hell of a leader, and he's a tough man, he's a strong man, and he did the right thing. Joining us now to discuss, P.J. Crowley, former Assistant Secretary of State and author of Red Line, and Hagar Shamali. She was the Director of Syria and Lebanon Strategy at the National Security Council during the first two years of the Syrian crisis, advising President Obama, i.e., we've got the experts. Hagar, what is your reaction to the deal? We got steamrolled again. And the part that I don't really understand is whether President Trump and, the, and his cohorts see that we've gotten steamrolled and that, and that they're spinning it, um, or that they actually believe we got some kind of good deal out of this. So the, the, the deal that they struck is, is bad for a few reasons. First, because it shows that the United States is not really a force to be reckoned with, right? Whatever Turkey wants, we'll give it to them. And now we've given them what they've wanted in possibly a less violent way, but we're not sure yet. So let's explain that. Given them what they wanted. Right. Turkey wants the Kurds out of that region. Mm -hmm. They're going to get that, but there just won't be bloodshed. Is that the case? Right. We, we believe there won't be bloodshed, but there will eventually. And the reason for that is first, so first you're displacing Kurds. You have an issue, a situation that was relatively stable in a region that is not at all stable, right? So we've taken that, we've made it unstable. You first, you'll get the displacement of Kurds who are living there. And second, if Turkey says, if they go through with what they say they want to do, which is put Syrian refugees that are in Turkey in that 20 mile buffer zone, you're talking about reigniting a possible conflict, right? You've got that you've, you're putting refugees there that may not have even been from that region. When you have a situation where you've got different religions, different tribes, an area where it's kill or be killed, then you could possibly be reigniting this. PJ, the president says it is a great day for civilization. <laughs> um, but I want to share what Mitt Romney said on the Senate floor yesterday. The announcement today is being portrayed as a victory. It is far from a victory. The decision to abandon the Kurds violates one of our most sacred duties. It strikes at American honor. What we have done to the Kurds will stand as a blood stain in the annals of American history. Was there no chance for diplomacy? Are we so weak and so inept diplomatically that Turkey Force the hand of the United States of America, Turkey. Republican Mitt Romney, what do you think about the deal, PJ? Well, I think he's largely right. I mean, it, it, the reality is there's always been a contradiction in the U.S. policy towards Syria. Um, you know, we we are allied with the Kurds. They did most of the heavy lifting, you know, to defeat the Islamic State Caliphate. Um, but Turkey is a, a NATO ally and, and sees the YPG, the vanguard of the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, as a threat to Turkey. Um, but in, in, in confronting this, we have done it in the worst possible way. At best, you can say the ceasefire has put a Band-Aid on a very deep, self-inflicted wound. And as Richard Engel has reported, you know, that, that stress, it's straining already, it's not going to hold. Meanwhile, whatever does happen going forward uh, in Syria, you know, with the withdrawal of U.S. forces from northern Syria, we're not going to be a factor in how this unfolds. OK, then what is the solution, Hagar? Uh, the president decided to withdraw troops. We know the situation on the ground there is serious. What is the solution? I fear it's a little bit too, too little too late in terms of our really? response. Yeah, because first, we've unleashed this situation now. And on, on top of it, one of the things that we haven't talked about is how Iran and Russia stand to gain. The Kurds have now aligned themselves with Syrian, the Syrian government, right? They're, they're murderer. They've aligned with them because they had no choice in order to 
face the Turks in that region. That alignment still exists because, like I said, it's, it's, it's survival of the fittest out there. So they've aligned with, them, with themselves, meaning that Russia and Iran will now have influence in the region where the Kurds are, an area that they were not previously in. So you've, you've, we've, we've made it much worse. And the notion that, by the way, that we can sanction our way to, to fix this, as you know, I, I love sanctions. I was at Treasury for a long time. Sanctions are not going to work in this regard. I'm not saying that Trump can't economically obliterate Turkey. He can cause them a lot of financial pain. But to say that sanctions are going to be the fix, there's just no way. I don't see how that could work. You are some kind of nerd. You know I love <laughs> sanctions, Stephanie. Um, PJ, I want to share this, and it's long, but I think it's important. Retired Navy Admiral William McRaven, who was also the former commander of U.S. Special Operations, is out with an op-ed, and he writes this. If our promises are meaningless, how will our allies ever trust us? If we cannot have faith in our nation's principles, why would the men and women of this nation join the military? And if they don't join, who will protect us? If we are not the champions of the good and the right, then who will follow us? And if no one follows us, where will the world end up? Two days before this, uh, one of the president's uh, 2020 advisors, his daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, said the Kurds, most Americans would have to Google what a Kurd is. What's your take? Will the U.S.'s actions have a lasting impact on the Trump administration and the future of our country? Well, I, I think uh, already you're seeing a recalculation of, um, of, of security interests in the region. You know, for example, how this fits in with the broader strategy of maximum pressure on Iran is, is anyone's guess. You know, we've been trying to confront Iran and their expansion uh, uh, in regional influence, and yet we're already seeing that in light of you know, the Trump decision on Syria, the Trump decision not to respond last month, you know, to the downing of an American drone. You know, the Saudis are seeking a back channel, you know, to Tehran. You know, it means there's going to be some sort of regional accommodation to Iran, you know, not a regional confrontation. You know, so uh, I, I think our broader Middle East strategy uh, is in tatters. Um, you know, we're in retreat. Everyone knows it. Uh, and, and as Hagar said, you know, that only benefits, uh, you know, Iran, Russia, Syria, you know, the Islamic State, none of that can be good for the United States. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.